Welcome back to Sanctuary Hills, it is time to make this place livable. I wanted to start by building a nice little farming zone, and the best place for that was right here behind the house that has the workshop. At first I wanted to place planters, but look at this shit. Uneven ground made it look terrible, so I chose to go with the standard plants. Since I had trouble organizing myself, I wanted to place a fence first, which would help me align the plants properly. I managed to find the gothic fence and placed it around the field. It's a bit annoying that many of these modded items don't have snapping, but at least we can use them. Them. On PC, that is. I'm sorry, console people. I went and placed three rows of plants. One row has carrots, another corn, and the third one melons. Carrots are for the Asian, corn for the white lady, and the melons for the black man. Food has been taken care of, and as I was walking past the research building, I noticed the little cemented area. I didn't really like how it was just sticking out without any purpose, so I deleted it and attempted to align a few more blocks so they go in line with the entire building. This shit proved to be more difficult than I anticipated, mostly because my brain refused to put the block on this edge here. I kept fucking it up over and over until I kinda did it properly. It wasn't perfect, but making anything in this game perfect Effect requires immense power even the gods of Petardia cannot grant. So in the end I created an additional platform that extended past the initial little area that I built for the research building, and also the fence for the institute now snaps. I guess the modders managed to get it to snap, so I was able to nicely add it to the edges. The back side of this platform brought a few rotten maggots with it, so I went ahead and used the glass walls and the doorway that managed to snap, unlike the fence. I know it doesn't make too much sense to have a glass wall with a door when a small fence is right next to it. It. But this is an insane asylum, not everything has to make sense. I went up to the first floor and placed two beds in the center. These beds would be used to observe the crazies while they sleep. While two crazies sleep, one needs to take a shower, as long as the other two are sleeping, and that person is to be watched by someone sitting on this chair. What the person does while sitting on this chair is up to them. The ground floor has two glowy showers and two drawers next to the wall and a shitting area in the middle. While two of the crazies are taking a glowy shower, the third crazy needs to sit on this bench and shit. The shit needs to be wrapped in toilet paper and thrown at the Christmas tree. This process is documented by two doctors that are standing nearby. I went back up and added some sort of testing stations where the doctors will sit and press buttons on these electronic things or something. I placed a fuel tank outside that will hold tetrodotoxin, a very strong neurotoxin which will be injected in the crazies every three days. I wasn't entirely sure what to do next, so I started placing street lamps along the entire settlement path. I wasn't sure how exactly should I align them, I wish we had a perimeter snapping point so we can add new street lamps at a specific distance from the existing ones. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I hope I don't sound insane. Building an insane asylum can do that. Anyway, once the lamps were set, I needed power. I wasn't sure where to put the generators, but the metal building kinda kept crying like the babies, so I went in there and placed a few industrial generators that looked pretty good. The colors were just right. Since most of the lamps were right next to the big walkway, I started adding conduits there. I added a shit ton of them all over the walkway, and since it was still daylight, I couldn't see how well was everything lit up, so I called upon the power of the gods, and they granted me darkness. Very beautiful darkness, if I may say so. The left side of the lamps wasn't working, so I needed to add more conduits on that side. Luckily, connecting wires through concrete works, so it was very easy to make the connection. This area before the military zone was in the dark as well, so after adding a few conduits on the house, everything nicely came to life. After returning to the guardhouse, I decided to start adding ceiling lights, and as I added them, I noticed how half of them didn't light up. This was because the conduits weren't going far enough. So I started placing them around the entire guardhouse, and thanks to the cement, it was easy connecting through the corners. If these were regular walls, fuckery would eat my ass. I was getting tired of the fucking lights and wires and my mind wanted to put some defenses. It probably wasn't necessary, but I added quite a few guard towers across the walkway and turrets on the ground. There is also one new item in the game thanks to mods. The guard rug. Fucking rugs, man, they're everywhere. So naturally, I added them everywhere. It never hurts to have more rugs, especially guard rugs, because then you can place as many normal rugs as you want, and the guard rugs will keep them safe. This being an insane asylum, I had to be careful about item placement. Adding potentially dangerous items was a huge risk to everyone in the settlement, so I wanted to make sure the guardhouse has only crafting stations, so each floor is reserved for one type of crafting station. When I got to one of the military houses, I placed power armor stations to the upper floor, and a cook cooking station to the ground floor. This will be the dining area for the military personnel. The walkway needed some lights, but not just any lights. This area needed to have fire barrels. This is extremely important to the functionality of the settlement. 
As the soldiers patrol, they will need to grab ashes from the fire barrels and throw them down on the ground. This is done because the ashes, combined with the tetrodotoxin in the crazies, gives them special attributes, which are being tested by the doctors. That throwing shit at the Christmas tree process is one of the tests. It is unknown what exactly is being tested and what makes the crazies special, but we must trust the gods and their methods. I was done with the walkway, so I went to the upper floor of the metal house. This entire room is being monitored by the doctors, and the goal here is to find out habits and behavior of the crazies when their minds are influenced with generator fumes. This corner is a test to see would the crazies eat the meat from the bags. The other two corners have a desk with a chair and a bunch of documents on them. The purpose of these documents is unknown. My guess is that the docs are suspecting that the generator fumes are making the crazies turn into lifeless secretaries, willing to sort the documents for Forever. The room also has a coffin on the ground that contains a secret portal to Zimbabwe, but it is locked with the power of Kevin Spacey so nobody can open it. Two wheelchairs for legless motherfuckers. I went back to the military canteen and added tables and benches to it. This corner has a ton of ammo boxes for various military reasons. The other corner has the chair. This chair has been touched and probed by the gods in ways humans can't even understand and nobody is allowed to sit on it. They can, however, yell at it. Yelling at the chair has proved to be helpful with soldiers that started to go insane due to the environment in this settlement. Profanities, including sexual intercourse with horses and older men, are most effective. The other military house has a printing press that will be used to print fuckery t-shirts and rugs, and a cannon that serves no purpose whatsoever. The rugs and butt sticks room has a shit ton of rugs just piled up at the end of the room. This is the case because butt sticks cannot be obtained yet, so the rugs are upset and can't organize themselves. There also needs to be a place where the test subjects can sit and eat, and where everyone can take a shit of course. This house has a table with four barber chairs. Barber chairs are necessary because their design calms the crazies down, and that is the only way they can sit and eat without trying to shit themselves. They eat from this little pot on the ground. They are only allowed to eat shit, both from themselves and and the soldiers. Why are the doctors trying to get them to eat meat from those bags is still not certain. Other rooms contain toilets, a lot of toilets, because they eat a lot of shit all day. This room has the only TV in the entire settlement and it is facing another toilet. In order for this TV to work, an individual needs to sit on the toilet and you guessed it, take a shit. As long as the process lasts, the TV will be functional. This process is measured by a device within the toilet and it is measuring the so-called ass force of the person sitting on it. This pretty much concludes the Sanctuary Settlement building. This settlement is effectively a militarized insane asylum that holds three highly insane and dangerous people, and they are used as testing subjects by the doctors that have been hired by the gods of Petardia. The research building is most important when it comes to testing, and I honestly had no idea the suicidal Asian man would be sleeping here as I was doing the tour, which just proves how my design is magnificent and that the gods are extremely satisfied. The entire settlement is nicely lit up with a lot of street lamps and the walkway has a ton of fire barrels that add a nice tone to the path. I'm quite pleased with the overall appearance of the entire settlement. There are still a few things that could be improved and a few houses are still completely unused, but the frame rate was starting to drop below 40 and I didn't want to risk it. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the Sanctuary Settlement building. This insane asylum is on a save file relatively early in the game, so it is possible to have a nice playthrough on it. The link will be in the description. I have been Petard, your glorious lord, and may the blessings of Petardi eternally touch your butt. How do you have the audacity to do that, you dirty, dirty little boy? <clears throat> So I started placing street lamps. 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 Kokaže lamps. Kšato opće znači. To kurac moj znači. Šuti.